You are partnering with Wells Fargo to share how their Fargo virtual assistant makes it easy. I feel like we all need this um, to keep the finances organized during this busy time of year, which we're going to get into. Um, talk to me kind of about why this was the perfect partnership for you. And in what ways do you use the Fargo assistant in your everyday life? I feel like Fargo assistant was so such a game changer for me that I really felt it was necessary to tell the entire world about this because as somebody like th this does not come natural naturally to me, like balancing everything, being organized, knowing where everything is in, in my emails or even, you know, what my account numbers are. All this stuff is like, was <laughs> always challenging for me. Um, I, I like to, I like to say I have a more creative mind, <laughs> but the actual logistics of organization, especially of your financial wealth and health being well-being, that was like so, so difficult for me, especially in when I started out. So um, when I started using Fargo, it was so intuitive. It was simple. It was easy to use. Technologically, it was easy. You can ask it so many different things. I found everything from finding out my balances to what my routing number is to what my purchases on Amazon recently were to sending right. a Zelle to a friend, you know, anything. It was so easy. It's like you, you can just in one step have this happen. One app. <laughs> and this was really, really a game changer for me. So I, I love it. I think it should and will make all of our lives a lot easier. And if there's something that can make everything flow when you're balancing so much easier, then that is something I want to share and, and help others with. I can't wait to get started and try this out. I, when I first was approached with the interview, I was like, Ooh, I want to, I want to know more about this. This sounds great. And you have a lot on your plate, obviously with all of your ventures and being a mother just in itself is I'm sure a lot, um, managing finances for both your household. And then also you have a production company. It must be so demanding. So what are kind of the best strategies that you can share that have helped maintain your financial stability? You mentioned it wasn't always like that when you first started out, which I'm sure it's hard, you know, being a, a 1099 freelancer all over the place. Yes. Um, so yes. we're curious what your strategies are to, to balance all those aspects in your life. It definitely was not easy when I first started you know, even when I got to college and I was for the first time being in this place where I was having to balance money and, and figure it out as I went. And I remember my mom being terrified for me. She was like, she is going off on her own. How's this going to happen? And so knowing that I have that awareness and like, it was, you know, just, it took some time to figure that out. I like to know where I need some extra support. So I think part of balancing and, and making everything work is knowing that you are not meant to do everything yourself and that you do need to reach out for help when you need it. And if there's something like this, like the Fargo app that can make all of this easier, then lean on it, use it and understand that you're not a one woman island and you really do need to get help when you can have it. So this was huge in that way, because I thought this is available for everybody. And this is something that really helps me in my life and I can do it and helps me balance. And so, yeah, I just think it's like, it's honestly one day at a time <laughs> for help when you need it, knowing where your weak spots are and anything that can help you with that and, and support you with that. And just it, it's, it's take it as it comes and find the tools that help. Going back to your household, are there any specific tips um, or guidelines that you and Steve abide by together for financial wellness um, now that you guys have been together for about like five years now? I think that every household, you have that conversation and you find out different uh, what your goals and values are together and, and how you can keep that as a priority and also manage all the things that go on in your life. And so I think that that's an important conversation to have as anybody does in any relationship, like really just have that conversation about what, what is it that we value? What is it we're working towards? What's our ultimate dream goal of a life look like? And then how do we take it one, one day at a time and make decisions that sort of bring that, you know? And so I think that we definitely everybody, I think has that moment and it's, it's just 
future planning and it's yeah. being smart and, and being conscious about your decisions with all things. Yeah, definitely. Um, why do you think it's so important, especially being a parent, um, to stay organized during these crazy times? Yes, yes, <laughs> um, it really is. Back to school is really a game of organization to me. I feel like the amount of school email that I receive with, you know, there's never like one email that has it all in it. It's multiple emails. I know moms out there will understand what I'm talking about. I just feel like it's like organizing and getting everything ready. And with two kids, two was really, they said that one is one kid, two is 10. And it's very true. So <laughs> getting them all up and dressed and fed and in the car. And then, and then by the time you get both kids dropped off, you're like, that was a whole day, right? And you're like, no, no, it's only, you know, 9 a.m. <laughs> So it's, but I find that anything that creates a flow for me, anything that helps in the organization and making things better, simple and flowing better is helpful. And that's why the Spargo app everyone needs. Yes, definitely. I mean, now that everyone is back to school and it's madness, I mean, I can't even imagine. I'm sure I hope you take like a nap during the day. I personally could not, could not uh, function without one. Yes, um, but I, I never get to nap. Sadly, every now and then I do, and it's the, the best thing in the world. Is other countries napping is a very important thing. I was like, I think we yes. need to bring it. <laughs> a siesta in the middle of the day is very important. Yes. Um, but what are your specific rules or tips um, to keep in your routine? And what does your routine kind of look like, and the family structure look like now that you're in a different routine with the back to school right. life? Um, it's much more structured. I think summer is loosening up later bedtimes, trips. Yeah, sure. We can watch a movie at eight 30 because it's summer and you're asleep and, you know, it's much more relaxed and chill. And I think on, when we go back to school, um, having more of a structure, like this is when we do this, this is when we eat dinner, this is when we take a shower. So when we go to bed, it becomes a little bit more necessary for structure because then the whole next day and my whole next day is affected if that, you know, gets a little bit chaotic and it does and it will. And there's never a perfect structure that works every single day, but having the idea of it kind of helps get everything a little bit earlier and everything flows a little easier and, you know, maybe yeah. the lunches the night before or whenever it is you need to do like all that stuff really just helps. Yes. And you have two different kids at two different ages. So how is that balancing? You know, they're kind of in two different stages of their lives right now. How is that balancing? Yeah, they're completely different stages. Um, Callum is three and he's in preschool. So, and, and, and they're both two different personalities and Evie is 10 and you know, she's in great. So two different schools, two different drop-offs, uh, two different attitudes. <laughs> like it's just across the board, but the great news is they both really, um, they're very symbiotic together. So even though their personalities are very different, they work so well together and they love each other. And it helps just having Evie in the car helps Callum go to preschool. Having Callum in the car helps Evie be excited and distracted for school. And so all of it, it knock on wood, it flows. <laughs> But definitely very, you know, a wide, wide age gap in there. So it's, um, it can, certain things can be a little bit more challenging. That's probably so cute though, seeing Everly, you know, attend to Callum and they're just like different ages. It's so, that's so fun. You know, I can't believe that she just turned 10. Um, is there anything specific that you're teaching her or habits that you're instilling at a young age in regards to financial wellness? Yeah. Um, budgeting has been a big topic as of late because she is, she's getting older. So she's starting to understand, you know, if I earn this much money, okay, what do I do with this? Right. So do I save it? Do I spend it? And if I do spend it, how much do I spend? Do you know, I, I it's been a topic. We've definitely done a few mall trips and things. So she's earned some money and then it's like, okay, well, how do you want to spend it? Or do you want to save it and then save up for something bigger? And we, the concept of giving back is a big thing is she recently had a lemonade stand and she made oh. a pretty solid amount of money because she was really working hard for selling this lemonade. That's so cute. <laughs> in the process, she really thought to herself, 
I'm going to give and donate a big portion of this to my dance studio. And then I have so much left that I'm going to figure out, do I want to save it? Do I want to go get a slime? What is it that I'm going to do with this? And like watching her kind of work it out and explaining to her, like, that's great. Like, it's great that you're learning that. So for her to the choice to be on her, and, and this will be the same way with Callum at some point and, you know, learning as you go and knowing you're going to make mistakes, but just figuring out what it means to hold on to money and what it means to spend and how to budget. That is adorable. And obviously both of her parents are clearly very successful and you both worked extremely hard to get in that position. And, and so, you know, admirable, how do you balance privilege with Everly at her age? I think both of my kids, because we, you know, we grew up, we're in a big city and we are obviously in this business, which brings its own set of differences in a lot of ways. But I think the values are the same. It's very grounding. Um, what matters to me as a mother is important, whether I be in Los Angeles or wherever city in, in the world. So being a kind person, being grateful for what you have, being uh, the type of person that has a spiritual flow and all this stuff. These are things that like I really talk and download with her a lot. And I think that that is grounding and that's humbling in its own way. And I'm really proud of both of my kids. I think they're really good people. They're kind and they are, they're just really lovely souls. And so I think it's about your own perspective and the gratitude element of it and the awareness of element of it. And that's something that um, I definitely am conscious of. Oh, with both. Good parenting. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. You're making me want them. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're so great at Yeah, and you may come over and <laughs> I may change my mind. <laughs> um, you're also obviously great at co-parenting during this crazy time. How do you guys make it work? Is there anything that changes? Um, anything specific and in regards to your routine? How do you make sure it's seamless? Oh, I mean, Steve and I really like our household is is I would say it's very open, communicative household. And I think that we offer a warm environment so our kids feel like really safe and comfortable to like talk to us about everything and come to us about everything. And yet, you know, over time I've learned boundaries and gotten better about realizing like in my own life, just with myself and people in my life and also my kids, like boundaries will really change the game. It's for everything. And knowing that you can hold that and that they actually feel safer with them. And then it causes them to feel more trust and they can come to you more things. So I really think having those values and having that sort of understanding of an open communication style in the house is really important. And that makes everything, parenting, everything, every communication easier. 